The word trijection isn't a commonly used term in mathematics, but we're going to use it today nonetheless. So what does it mean? A bijection is essentially a matching between two sets. Given one thing in set A, there's exactly one thing in set B that it matches with, and likewise for elements of B. Notably, there can be many bijections between two sets of the same size. A trijection, then, should be a sort of matching among three sets. Say we have sets A, B, and C, then a trijection should match an element of A to elements of B and C, which in turn match to each other. Once we've matched everything in its own little triangle, we know that the disjoint union of the three sets is three times the size of one of them. If the trijection falls short of perfection and misses a few elements of A, B, or C, we may have to take that into account. We'll look at two identities that we'll prove using trijections. First up, this one. 3 times the sum of 3n choose 3k is 2 to the 3n plus 2 times minus 1 to the n. Before we go creating our trijection, let's first understand what we're looking at. The sum of 3n choose 3k is like looking at row 3n of Pascal's triangle and adding up every third term. Since we're relatively experienced with binomial coefficients, we know that adding up every entry in the row would be 2 to the 3n. The 3 out front means that our sum is almost exactly a third of the total. We only miss 2 to the 3n by 2, either above or below. By the way, for a warm-up, you could pause the video and try proving the analogous two-step version of this statement. 2 times the sum of 2n choose 2k is 2 to the 2n. In that one, you don't need a correction term, and a bijection will do just fine. Anyway, back to our trijective proof. The strategy is to create three sets which all have a size very close to the sum of 3n choose 3k. By having almost a complete trijection among those sets, we'll see that they all have the same size except for a slight mismatch that depends on the parity of n. Say we have a 3 by n strip of boxes, and we shade in any number of those boxes. The number of such configurations is all of the 2 to the 3n, as we've already said. Set A0 consists of the configurations with a multiple of 3 boxes filled. This filling's not in it. That one would be. So the size of set A0 is the sum of 3n choose 3k. Set A1 consists of the configurations where the number of filled boxes is one more than a multiple of three. And set A2 are those with two more than a multiple of three boxes filled. It should be clear that because they're disjoint, the size of A0 plus the size of A1 plus the size of A2 is 2 to the 3n. It's not immediately obvious that sets A1 and A2 are exactly the same size and only differ by set A0 by a single element each, but that's where our trijection comes in. When we create the trijection, if n is even, set A0 will have an extra element that doesn't get matched with those in A1 or A2. So the size of A0 is the size of A1 plus 1, or the size of A2 plus 1. So 3 times the size of A0 is the size of A0 plus the size of A1 plus 1 plus the size of A2 plus 1, which is 2 to the 3n plus 2, as desired. When n is odd, it will turn out that set A0 is 1 smaller than A1 or A2, so this time 3 times the size of A0 is 2 to the 3n minus 2. Great! All we need now is the trijection, and to see which elements don't quite line up in the end. Finally, the fun part! Notice that we can put the following mini configurations into trijection. Our strategy is to look for the first column of our 3 by n filled strip that is one of these mini configurations. We can three way match it to configurations where we swap that column with the other two mini configurations, leaving everything else the same. I know you're all excited to say, yeah, but what if none of the columns? Okay, sure. We'll get to that in a second, but before we do, let's see why, if one of the columns is found, we have a little trijection triangle among sets A0, A1, and A2. 
By construction, when we swap a column, we leave everything outside that column alone, so we produce two new configurations which each differ from the first by one mod 3. Looking at this one column alone, we can't know which configuration is in A0 or A1 or A2, but we know they're all in different sets, so we do have a little triangle of matching. Okay, back to your earlier complaint that, sure, this is most of the configurations, but we missed those where all the columns are filled filled empty or empty empty filled. In this case, we play a similar game. Look by pairs of columns for the first mini configuration that's one of these, and do a 3 by 2 swap. Again, each of these has a different remainder mod 3, so like before, we've made a trijective triangle. Be careful here, there's a subtlety which is we need to shift by two columns when hunting for one of these mini configurations. See if you can figure out what's wrong if we were to shift by only one. But Ted, I hear you say, what if we still can't find one of these configurations? Okay, okay, calm down, almost there. The only way you can avoid all the mini configurations is if the first 3x2 block is this, and then the next 3x2 block is 2, and so on. If n is even, this repeated pattern is the only unmatched configuration. The number of its filled boxes is a multiple of 3, which, recalling back to our discussion a couple minutes ago, is exactly what we needed. When n is odd, the exception pattern looks like this, or this. In those cases, sets A1 and A2 have an extra element. Again, just what we had hoped for. Whew, that was a lot of cases to work through, but we did it. Really, one trijection is a novelty. Once we have two, maybe then I'll have convinced you to put trijections into your toolbox. Ready for another trijective proof? For odd n, the sum of minus a half to the k times n choose k times n plus k choose n is zero. What is this ugly nonsense? Alternating? Fractions? Don't worry, the zero on the right side is pretty pleasant, so it looks like everything will work out in the end. If you're scared of alternating sums, I put a couple videos in the description of my usual technique for proving them, but we're gonna put a twist on that today, so don't worry if you haven't seen those videos already. Although the approach we're going to make is a little algebraic, I still say this counts as a counting proof. Okay, no more stalling. Let's see what that left-hand side counts. We'll do this part slowly, because it's a pretty complicated sum and. Start by choosing k squares from an n-long strip. We need an n plus k choose n next, so imagine that these squares are split in half, so we now have n plus k total rectangles. Of these n plus k rectangles, fill n of them, the same number of full squares we started with. So an individual square can have one of six possible fillings. Unfilled, filled, split with both unfilled, split bottom filled, split top filled, or split both filled. You with me so far? Now we tackle the alternating and fraction part at the same time. Let's say the weight of a square is one if the square is unsplit, or minus a half if split, regardless of how it's filled. We're not physicists, so negative weight doesn't bother us. Let the weight of the filling of an entire strip be the product of the weights of the squares. When we have k split squares, the weight of the strip is minus a half to the k. Now we see that the sum counts the total weight of all fillings of n long strips which have k split squares and n total filled rectangles. The claim is that the total weight of all these configurations balances out to zero. So how on earth will a trijection help us out? I claim that the configurations can be partitioned into groups of three each of which has a total weight of zero. Remember that for this setup, we have n odd. Because there are n filled boxes and n is odd, that means there's always some square with exactly one rectangle filled. Either it's a filled square, or it's split bottom filled, or split top filled. Find the first such square and put the configuration in trijection with the other two possible odd fillings swapped in at that location. Let's look at the weights of these three. 
Since the fillings are the same in all other squares, the weight in the other squares can be distributed out and we see that the 3 necessarily sum to 0. The set of all configurations is divided into three parts. Set A are the ones with a filled square first, B has a split bottom first, and C a split top. Instead of breaking up the total weight as the weight of A plus the weight of B plus the weight of C, we can go trajected triangle by trajected triangle and see the sum of all the weights is zero. We could call it a day here, but I should probably tell you that rather than refer to trijections of little triangles, mathematicians usually use the term equivalence class, and it isn't restricted to partitioning into twos or threes. If everything in a set can be put into equivalence classes of the same size, we know that the size of one class times the number of classes is the total number of elements. And that brings us to today's challenge problem. Fermat's little theorem. If p is prime and a is greater than or equal to 1, then p divides a to the p minus a. A combinatorial proof of Fermat's little theorem consists of a set of size a to the p minus a and an equivalence relation where any class has exactly p elements. Given that, the statement follows. So rather than a trijection, see if you can find a p-jection on a set of size a to the p minus a to get the job done. That's all I've got for you today. If you come across any fun trijective proofs, be sure to drop them in the comments.